Mr. Tordeau was evaluated at the Forensic Psychiatry Center for Western Ohio. He participated in a clinical interview on that day, which lasted approximately two hours. The following additional sources of information were utilized during the preparation of this report, physical health and school disciplinary records. I've completed a psychological examination of the defendant, Mr. Jacques Trudeau. In order to provide a thorough examination in determining the defense, defendant's insanity and his capacity to understand the wrongfulness of his conduct at the time of the alleged offenses, the following was administered and reviewed by the examiner. Clinical interview and mental status examination, Wessler Adult Intelligence Scale, 4th edition, Wide Range Achievement Test, 5th edition. Review of documents provided by the court, including A, a chronological case summary, affidavit of probable cause for arrest and warrant, mental and medical services report from the Delaware County Jail, consultation with the medical staff at the Delaware County Jail, review of the medical file at the Delaware County Jail. It is important to keep in mind that a defendant's lack of intelligence, educational level, language deficits, or communication issues are not viewed as sufficient to support a finding of incompetency. There are key questions in this case that must be answered to, in order to determine if Mr. Tordeau is competent to stand trial. This evaluator asserts that Mr. Jacques Trudeau can do the following. One, adequately communicate with defense counsel and comprehend information. Two, make decisions in regards to the case. Three, understand the elements of the charges, the gravity and charges, and the possible consequences. Competency to stand trial is legally unrelated to the defendant's state, of, state at the time of the alleged crime. The issue of competency relates to the defendant's state of mind and ability to comprehend the criminal proceedings. The information obtained from this evaluation will determine if Mr. Tordeau understood the wrongfulness of his actions at the time of the alleged offenses. Mr. Tordeau was informed of the purpose and the non-confidential nature of the evaluation prior to its commencement and that its contents may be revealed if defense attorney Michelle Allen deems it in his best interest. He indicated his understanding of the aforementioned information by paraphrasing the undersigned's explanation in basic terms for his sanity evaluation. And he acknowledged the receipt of that information by signing an informed participation statement. He then verbally agreed to participate in the evaluation. Mr. Jacques Trudeau is currently incarcerated at the Delaware County Jail in Muncie, Indiana. A clinical interview and a mental status examination was completed with Mr. Trudeau. Additionally, an assessment of his cognitive functionality was attempted. Unfortunately, due to the frequent and intense atypical behaviors exhibited, the assessment of intellectual skills was unable to be completed. His recorded comments and responses provide valuable information regarding this evaluation. The 90-minute assessment began with an introduction of myself and my person. Mr. Tordeau then introduced himself to me, mimicking James Bond, said he was Tordeau, Jacques D. Tordeau, 12 but my friends call me Ziggs, like the rolling papers. The rationale for the evaluation was provided to Mr. Tordeau. The examiner explained that an evaluation was ordered by his defense team. Mr. Tordeau was manic, tangential, tangential, and hyper-focused on discussing his need to get released and his classwork he needed to complete. I asked him when he was last in school, and he said, quote, music is school, man. That's all I need to learn, unquote. Upon reviewing school records, he had never completed high school and has slowly been working on getting his GED online. Also included in these records were brief documents describing behavioral issues in high school, including issues ranging from anger management and anxiousness to depression. Mr. Tordeau explained to the examiner that he's been living with his mother in Muncie, Indiana. I asked Mr. Tordeau what his home environment was like. He replied, mom does her best, but it's always dirty. She tries to clean, but it just ends up mad and breaks things. When asked to give an example, Mr. Tordeau replied, quote, mom couldn't get a spot off the floor and broke my guitar, unquote. Mr. Trudeau then began an incoherent rant about things his mother had done in the past and started getting agitated. In order to get him calmed down, I redirected the conversation to his music. I asked him what music he enjoys and received a response of, quote, rock, duh, unquote. He was then asked who his role model is. He replied, quote, I can channel the energy of Randy when I'm playing, unquote. I asked who Randy was, and he replied, quote, Rose, unquote. When asked what the energy gives to him, 
he explained, I am him, his reincarnation. Just put a guitar in my hands and I'll shred just like he did back in the day. I feel and accept my destiny of rock and roll, unquote. When asked what he believes his destiny is, he replied, quote, I'm a rock and roll legend, my destiny is fame, unquote. It is important to note Mr. Trudeau appears to believe that he has a special connection to Randy Rhodes. I then moved on to aspects of the alleged crime. The examiner asked if Mr. Trudeau was aware of his charges. He nodded yes, but then replied with following information, quote, I don't know what is going on. People are lying. They're jealous of me. I don't trust any of you. I have to get out of here. They're going to take my music and my instruments, unquote. When asked about the consequences of being found guilty, Mr. Turdo replied, quote, I guess you get locked up in the jail. I don't know why I'm here, unquote. He then started singing Jailhouse Rock. I'll let him finish the song to avoid further agitating Mr. Turdo. After he'd finished, I asked, quote, why is it wrong to commit the alleged crimes, unquote. Mr. Turdo was never able to provide a reasonable answer to any of the questions presented by the examiner, but he did keep repeating, quote, sex is bad, I guess, unquote. It is of great importance to understand Mr. Turdo was never able to accurately answer why it was wrong, as well as why someone would go to jail, although it would actually be prison if found guilty. During the attempted cognitive functionality assessment, Mr. Turdo was never able to exhibit an organized, coherent thought process. He was confused at times and disorganized in his thinking. He quickly went from calm to agitation to anger. He also cried once. Mr. Trudeau was not able to exhibit self-control in terms of regulation of his emotions. Examination of medical records indicate Mr. Trudeau is currently not taking any medications, but had been seeing a counselor throughout his high school years. In summary, during the assessment with Dr. Grimes, Mr. Trudeau was unable to answer questions. Furthermore, he was unable to follow a logical and sequential conversation. Anger, paranoia, and delusional thinking were also noted. Bipolar affective disorder with, psychology, with psychotic symptoms utilized for diagnoses included present test results, self-report, review of records, and clinical observations. It is important to note that Mr. Jacques Trudeau does not appear to be malingering. However, it is very difficult to assess this possibility due to Mr. Trudeau's extreme behaviors and thought processes. Mr. Jacques Trudeau is in need of mandatory supervised mental health treatment and care. Additionally, he is high risk for aggression and violence towards self and others. I'd like to thank Attorney Allen for allowing me the opportunity to work with Mr. Jacques Trudeau. Pursuant to Section 2945.371, subsection G, subparagraph 4 of the Indiana Revised Code, it is the undersigned's opinion with reasonable certainty that at the time of the alleged offenses, the defendant was displaying active signs and symptoms of a severe mental defect. He further did not know the wrongfulness of the acts charged. It is therefore, in my opinion, that Mr. Trudeau meets the criteria to be deemed legally insane as defined by Section 2945.371, subsection G, paragraph 4 of the Indiana Revised Code. If you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to give me a call. I have attached our current fee schedule, which has changed slightly over the skill we have utilized in our business relationship over the past 12 years. All right. Hello, Dr. Grimes. My name is Alyssa Reisinger, and I'd like to ask a few questions about your report. All right. Um, could you turn to the clinical interview and mental status examination section of the report? Okay. Okay? All right. Does a diagnosis for bipolar affective disorder qualify the defendant as legally, it, legally insane? It would if he displayed signs of the disorder at the time of the offense. Okay. Um, can you explain what a high risk for aggression and violence means? High risk of aggression would be a tendency to inflict physical violence when angered. All right. And was this high risk for aggression and violence <clears throat> one reason you determined the defendant legally insane in your report? It does play a part. He does show signs of aggression, but it's not necessarily frequent violence that only determines this. It also has to do with timings and mood swings. Okay. Did the defendant display any violent behaviors during your evaluation? He was angry, but he didn't display any physical violence towards myself during the evaluation. Okay. Did the defendant threaten to physically harm you during your evaluation? No. 
Did the defendant threaten to physically harm himself during the evaluation? No. Okay. Uh, would you agree that a review of records was utilized to determine the defendant's legal sanity? Yes. Uh, the defendant's school records were taken into account while determining the defendant's legal sanity. Is that correct? Yes, it is. We do not have the school records you refer to in your forensic evaluation report as evidence, correct? That's correct. Um, and I want to say that's the reason because the school was not subpoenaed for the records. I was provided his history of records from the school on behalf of his mother. Okay. All right, let's take a look at the last report, the last paragraph of your report. Okay. Um, you've had a business relationship with the attorney for 12 years, is that correct? Yes, I have occasionally assisted with court cases over the last 12 years. Mm -hmm. Would you say a business relationship qualifies you, Dr. Grimes, and the attorney as co-workers? Uh, no, I don't. As I am used on occasion, uh, because of my experience and expertise in the field. It's not a co-worker relationship. Okay. Uh, would you feel com conflicted in any way if you had to testify against the interest of a co-worker in court? No, not at all. Uh, have you heard of the phrase conflict of interest? Yes, yes, uh, of course. And have you ever been a witness for this attorney prior to this case? Yes, but again, only on occasion. All right. Um, all right, I would like to switch topics a little bit. Um, okay. Can you confirm to the best of your knowledge that Taylor Terry is a minor? To the best of my knowledge, yes. Okay. And according to your report, uh, Jack Tordeau was born in 1984, making him a legal adult. Do you agree? Yes. Um, according to your resume, if you have that on you, yeah. um, you can turn to your publications and projects. You participated in the project uh, American Psychology Association, the behavioral effect of a damaged childhood, correct? Yes, I did. Uh, can you confirm that you, quote unquote, set out to prove antithesis that juveniles are trustworthy in communication for non-biased accounts of life experience? Yes. Um, would you say juveniles cannot be trusted to give an honest, unbiased account of a life experience? Generally, I found that statement to be incorrect. There are certain circumstances in which that paper highlights where there may be undue influence. Uh, I encourage everyone to read it, but generally that statement is not correct. Okay. Uh, can we infer, based on that thesis, that you do not believe Taylor Terry can give an unbiased testimony? Yeah, that would depend on the circumstances. I haven't reviewed that, but that's not why I'm here. I haven't been given those documents. I only analyzed the behavior of the defendant. All right, let's take a look at the education portion of your resume. Okay, your most recent education is with Johns Hopkins uh, for a master's degree from May 1995 to 2000, correct? I, I got a doctorate, but yeah, it was at John, Johns Hopkins through 2000. According to your resume, you received the Early Graduate Student Award in 2014. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, I was recognized as one of the top 10 professors who helps younger than average graduate students as they're going through their research, and they nominate a certain amount of professors through the National Association, and then they are uh, then given out to the top 10. So is it accurate for me to say in any way that your resume is missing important information about your education. Not that I can think of, no. Uh, turn over to your publications again. Okay. Um, you are the author of the publication, Is Teen Attraction Really Sick? A study of non-pedophiles, correct? Yes. Can you state your thesis for this publication? Yeah, so I'll give more of a general overview on this one. Um, the article studies search criteria of uh, pornographic sites for searches of specific terms. Uh, this also featured a random anonymous study of people's favorite pornographic category and then compares the data to the amount of known pedophiles and the amount of estimated pedophiles and then tries to determine the percentage of people who watch those certain types of category videos uh, but would never perform a sexual act with someone at the younger age. No further questions.